It took a while, but I think I finally found a battery that's going to work. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back guys. So today we're going to be taking a look at the Watt Cycle battery. And this is a battery that I'm pretty excited about for one specific reason. Watt Cycle reached out and asked me if I wanted to take a look at this battery and I readily agreed after I saw the dimensions on this battery. This is the absolute smallest lithium iron phosphate 100 amp battery that I have seen to date. It's even smaller than the battery I just reviewed a few weeks back. The plan with this battery, because of its size, is I'm going to be installing two of these into the RV to replace that uh, single WISE battery that I have in the RV right now. The WISE battery is too large to be able to get two of them into the compartment that I have in the RV at the moment. That's where these really shine, assuming they're going to pass all the tests. And we'll get to that in just a few minutes. But the size of these allows them, uh, will allow me to put two of them in the same space that is occupied by only one of those 100 amp hour WISE batteries right now. Let's go ahead and jump over to the bench and take a look at this. Now the battery comes with a pretty good user's manual that covers several different ones of their batteries. They do offer these everything from a 50 amp hour all the way up to a 400 amp hour. The one I have, or the two that I have, are both the 100 amp hour minis. I did not receive the smart version, but that's okay. I'll take a dumb battery. All right, we get some precautions right here on the front. Don't crush them, don't eat them, blah, blah, blah. Looking at it though, uh, it does talk about some of the features. It does have a nylon carry handle. We'll see that a little bit more detail here in just a second. It does give us a bit of information about the discharge curve and how to wire these up in a solar system. Over on the other page, it gives us more details on the uh, BMS that's included with the battery. So it looks like the max continuous discharge is going to be 100 amps. It does offer all of the standard protections, overcharge, over discharge, over current, uh, short circuit protection, and it's supposed to have both high temp and low temp, which is critical for me. That low temp charge protection is something that we will be testing here in just a minute. Goes on through a few more details in the manual that you can read through. Uh, does I do like the fact that it has the cable sizes that you should be using for your battery depending on how much current you're going to be consuming from the battery at any given time. So the, the manual is well done. Now looking at the battery itself. This thing is a scant eight and a half inches wide. Let's see, this direction we're looking at just over eight, so about eight and a quarter inches tall. And then let's check the width of that battery as well. And we can see it's a little hard because of the way the top is laid out here, but it's less than six inches across for this battery. And that's what's going to make this a winner for me. Now, we're going to be doing three different videos actually on this battery. This uh, short review today, then we're going to do the installation into the RV. And then roughly a year from now, I wanna pull these back out of the RV and do a discharge test to see how that compares to the testing that we're going to see in this video. So how much will it lose over a year's worth of use. I can tell you right now, the current battery that I've got in the RV is two years old and it still pulls 95% of its original capacity. So I'm very pleased with that battery, other than the fact that it's so large, I can't fit two of them into the space. That's where this battery is gonna win out, but we'll have to wait a year to know if it's going to hold up after a year's worth of usage. Now, I did a discharge test on both of these batteries. The first one pulled 103.93 amp hours, so it definitely gets a passing grade. And the second one was a very close second at 103.79. So they're almost identical in the discharge test. So that is pleasing to see. 
and that is one step closer to getting these installed in the RV. All right, so this battery has been in the freezer overnight, and you can see that that is sitting right around four degrees. Let's give this thing a test and see if it's going to charge. All right, now, just like you've seen in several of my other videos, if this light goes red, then that means it's charging. If it stays green, then it is not charging. Let's go ahead and connect this, and good deal. We've got a green light, which means it is not charging. All right, battery two is about seven degrees right now, eight degrees. Let's see if it'll take a charge. All right, moment of truth. Let's go ahead and connect that. And the light stays green. That's good news. Now I realize this initial video is very short, but I've tested what I wanted to test before putting this into the RV. The uh, inverter that I have that I could connect to this battery is only a 1000 amp, so I can't uh, pull enough power to test the uh, overcurrent protection of the BMS. But I am looking forward to testing this long term in the RV and being able to do something that we don't typically do, and that's giving you guys a long-term review of this battery. Now, granted, it will take us a while to get there, but that's something that I'm curious to see because we can only make recommendations on initial testing most of the time. To me, it's always good when I can come back to you guys a year or two years down the road and let you know how a product is still performing. The installation video will be coming uh, probably in four, maybe five weeks. I do have Huntsville Ham Fest coming up that I'm going to have to get through first. Then we'll get this installed into the RV so that we can run a test on it. Uh, I am super excited about this. Last year when we went to Florida, we were using about 50 amps per night when we were boondocking. So these two batteries together with no solar going back into the batteries would give me about four days of runtime. If we add solar panels into that, even on cloudy days, I think we could probably stretch that out to about a week's worth of usage. And at that point, I'm probably going to be out of fresh water if we're in a strictly boondocking situation. So hope you found today's information helpful. Stick around for the installation video and then uh, the long-term the long-term review video coming up next year. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.